Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. First Thessalonians, when Paul visited in Acts chapter 16, verse 17. Paul and Silvius and Timothy, which is Timothy, unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Salutation, the greeting. We give thanks to God always for you, making mention of you in our prayers. Paul was a prayer warrior. Everyone and everybody he prays for. I don't think he would be lying to us. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith. So they didn't work for salvation. He worked for because they were saved. And it's the working of the faith. And labor of love. Oh, God is love. You can't know love unless you know God. So they know God through Jesus Christ and righteousness. And they got love. And patience of hope. Well love and patience and hope. And patience long suffering. That's three of the fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5. Patience and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ. So see, they got the work of faith, one. Labor of love, two. Patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not just hope. It's hope in Jesus Christ. In the sight of God and our Father. So what we do, we do for the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ and God is watching. Knowing, brethren, say people, beloved, your election of God, we talked about the election before, this is not Calvinism. This is, you have received Christ as your Savior, you have chosen, and asked God to choose you because of Jesus Christ. For our gospel, there it is again, for Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day the third day according to the scriptures came not unto you in word only need the word but also in power and the Holy Ghost and in much assurance so the gospel's got to come by the word you got to have the power you got to have the Holy Ghost and you got to have insurance that is what the gospel goes out with. The word, the Holy Ghost, God's power, and assurance. And if somebody says, well, I don't know if I'm saved or I have no idea, well, that's not the gospel. Because these things have I written unto you, John, says that you may know. So how do you know someone is saved? There's assurance. Hey, I'm saved. And I know it. I don't know what happened. That's the Holy Spirit. But boy, do I feel different power. Here's a Bible. Start reading the Gospel of John. And another, you know, another thing too is the Gospel of John is good for a lost Christian. I'm a lost Christian. Well, a lost man and for a new Christian. And I would advise both of them to pick up the Gospel of John and read it. And then another thing I would tell them is before you go to Genesis, Read 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians is a great book for the Christian. It's a lot of material. 
in short chapters, easy to look at, and then have them go to Genesis. As ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Okay. We. The Apostle Paul. Well, you know what manner we were. Can you imagine if he were speaking about the, these uh, new churches today? Can you imagine if he was speaking with a television preacher or a radio? Well, what character does radio and TV preachers have? That's not what Paul is. He says, when we came to you with the gospel, we had the work of faith, we had the love, we had the patience and hope in Jesus Christ, we've had the gospel, we got the word, we have the power, the Holy Spirit, and we have the assurance, and we have come to you. And ye become followers of us. So see what it is? When you go with the word, the power, the Holy Spirit, the ghost, and the assurance, there comes followers. There is no TV movies or videos. It's the Word, the power, the Holy Ghost, and the assurance, and followers. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord. So you follow the apostles and you follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you didn't really know the Lord Jesus Christ until you were taught. I mean, you received him as your Savior, but now you got to be taught. Having received the word, uh-oh, in much affliction. So what did they get for being saved and trusting in Jesus Christ? Did they get riches? Did they get power? Did they get, oh, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? No. And if you were to promise a lost man by receiving Christ as your Savior, everything will be wonderful. I watched a video about that today. You are lying. Because the first thing these people got was assurance. They got the power. They got the Holy Ghost. Then they got affliction. But watch this. With joy of the Holy Ghost. Now, one of the remarkable churches that suffered the most is the Church of Thessalonians. And they did it with joy. What was their joy? The Holy Ghost. Now, we ask ourselves, and I don't know my own character. I'm a man. I'm a sinner. I'm capable of lying. I'm capable of sinning. And I always say, you know, if we ever came to persecution, could I survive being burned at the stake? Could I survive losing my head? Could I be whipped and beaten? And some preachers will say, oh no, you can't say that. Well, you know what? What's it say here? Much affliction with the joy of the Holy Ghost. It's not what I can endure. It's not what I can suffer. It's not what I'm going to feel. Is the Holy Spirit measured inside of me. That's how all the people in Fox's Book of Martyrs got the victory. How can a man be burning at the stake and sing a hymn? How can another man be burned at the stake holding the Bible, quoting scripture? How can a man walk up to where he's going to lose his neck and say, Hey, put your hand on my heart, and if my heart is beating any more than yours is, you don't have to receive my Savior. Now, if you're going to say, Man... You haven't read your Bible enough. Because if you are going to get through that stuff, if you're going to go through that pain and suffering, you're going to do it through the Holy Ghost, and that's the only victory you're going to get. So I guess through the Holy Ghost, you can go through all the torture. Doesn't he have the power? Doesn't he have the fruit? Get you through it? Love, joy, peace, patience. So that ye were in samples. That's a plural of example. So why not example? Why the plural of example? Because the entire church as a group were doing. Not just one person. Not just the pastor. Not just the, the deacon. But all of them. Were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and 
at Kaya. What were they doing? Their lives were so abundantly in God that Macedonia and Achaia said, hey, we're going to follow their example. What they're doing, we're going to do. And the church has done that today. The problem is they're following the poor example. If you ever want to see that, just go on a Christian Facebook wall page and see what examples they have. They're anything but godly. Because they've got the wrong ministries. We're going to try to stop abortion. We're going to praise Donald Trump. That's not what you're supposed to praise Jesus Christ. You're supposed to preach the gospel and live a godly life. And Macedonia and AK, Macedonia shows up much in Paul's ministry. And when Paul writes these churches about Macedonia, these churches we are writing to, there is no book of Macedonia. All these churches we are reading and been studying, they have been a benefit to the Macedonian church. What kind of benefit is your and my church? What kind of benefits is my Christian life for somebody else? Can somebody say, hey, I want to do what that guy's doing because he's doing right? Or... A sorry thing is, and I've heard many people say this in my, in my ministry, am I an excuse for somebody not to follow Jesus Christ? You can be an example, in sample, or you can be someone's excuse. Well, I'm not going to do it because you that guy over there. From, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread aboard, so that we need not to speak any. Paul, you know what Paul just said there, the apostle, the man who wrote the Bible, the man who, who spoke of Mars Hill. He says, I go in these areas and I don't need to say nothing. You have already said it for us. Praise God. I go in this neighborhood, I go in the street, and there are people talking about Jesus. Where did you hear about Jesus Christ? The Thessalonian, that person in that Thessalonian church, they told us about Jesus. So you know what Paul can now do in in Macedonia and in Calia? He does not need to do a full work there. He gets the missing places, and he can move on somewhere else. Because the work is being done by the Thessalonians. And it's being done faithfully. He's not rebuking them as he has done to the first, to the Corinthian church or the Galatian church. He, you guys are doing the full work of the ministry. Wow. For they themselves showed of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. That they were a testimony. And you guys were a testimony of us apostles and us missionaries. Almost like you guys were copycats of us through the Holy Spirit. How ye turn to God from idols. That is repentance. And there are still Christians today that, oh, they turn to God, but they haven't left the idols. How many people at Daytona 500, oh, we're Christians. Really? What are you doing here on a Sunday morning? And they'll say to us, well, what are you guys doing here on a Sunday morning? Because you're not in church, so we got to bring the church to you. And you're not going to tell your fellow people about Jesus Christ, so we will tell your friends and all your fans about Jesus Christ, because you ain't going to do it, because you got yourself all dressed up in that moron who can't do no right-hand turns. And you call yourself a Christian. If you were a Christian, all right, you would go to that event, and you would sit with all, I don't know what they call this, this, the seats and all that, the stand. You would witness to everybody around you until that race started and say, hey, this is what you need to do being saved. But unlike the Thessalonians, you ain't doing that. So people like us have got to go on the street and tell people about Jesus Christ. So repentance is you leave your old life, the old man idols, to the new man, God. And serve the living and true God. That's true repentance. God says it's not good. God says it's a sin. God says it's wrong. I ain't doing that no more. 
If I'm going to do it, I'm going to fight it. I'm going to put it in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I am going to try to do right in my life. That's what the Thessalonians are doing. There are churches out there that, you know, they, they promote sins. It's not repentance. And to wait for his son from heaven. Oh, look at that. 2017, we say, oh, we want the rapture to happen today. And in, this says, 654 A.D., the Thessalonians say, oh, I wish the rapture would happen today. Well, it didn't happen yet. It hasn't happened yet. Let's go tell people about Jesus Christ. Let's go get gospel tracks out. They're going to have a thing at the Colosseum. Let's go there and preach to them while they're going to go watch whatever they watch. You know, the Thessalonians and the Romans were doing the same things we do today. They would have big things at the Colosseum. And I guarantee Christians would stand outside that Colosseum and preach to everybody going in there. Just as much as we preach to NASCAR. Don't think, oh, we're all better because we preach to a bunch of NASCAR fans. No, they're doing it in Paul's time to their arenas, to their assemblies, whatever the world is doing. You don't think so? What was Mars Hill? Paul walks up to this National Park monument of this unknown God. They're all bowing down, kissing his feet, twiddling their beads, saying the Lord's Prayer. Oh, isn't that so great? Paul walks up there and says, this is the God you're to worship. This is the God that's the creator that you ignorantly worship. Let me show you the true God of the Bible. Then he upset the meaning. To wait for his son from heaven. That's the hope. Titus 2.13. They wanted Jesus Christ to come during their lifetime. And they died with hope because Jesus will come. They will be called out of the grave. I read somebody the other day. Somebody, somebody put that. You know, I wish the Lord would come today. And I read a Christian say, no, not now. Wait. You're full. You're full. When he raised from the dead, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. That's the tribulation period. The seven years of tribulation. That is our calling out before that event happens. Jacob's trouble. We will be called out and we will be resurrected. How and what did the Thessalonians believe? Like Jesus Christ was resurrected the third day. As Jesus came out of that tomb, Guess what? Us Christians are going to come out too. Only thing is, we're going to meet in the air. So what this belief is, I forget, I always forget, it's the first or second Thessalonians 4. I know it's chapter 4. Paul is going to tell them about the rapture. Why is Paul going to dedicate what the rapture is going to happen to Thessalonians? Because look at verse 10. They believe it. You guys believe that? All right. I'm going to write about it. I'm going to tell your church. It's going to be in the Bible what's going to happen the resurrected day when Christ calls his bride home. So look at So if you believe something from what the Bible says, God God may, hey, you believe that? Let me show you some more. You, you, you believe that? Let me give you some more meat. And that's called growing as Christians to a full age Christian where you can say at the end of your life, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my court. I'm going to get a crap. Paul said, Paul, the assurance, not only Paul had the assurance of salvation, that I'm going to go to be with the Lord, absent from the body and present with the Lord. Paul says, I am going to get a crown. Now, is that assurance? This is the same guy that wrote, said, that what I, that I want to do, I don't do. But that what I don't want to do, I do do. And I am upset that I do what I don't want to do. And I'm upset that what I want to do, I, I, I don't do. He's a wretched sinner. He's a chief sinner. I am not even worthy because I persecuted Christians. And you get churches out there, oh, adultery and adultery. Well, Paul was a murderer. And he says, I'm going to get a crown and I'm going to heaven. Look at that assurance. And these Thessalonians, we read about assurance. You finished the chapter. They know Jesus Christ is coming. They're probably in heaven right now to say, hey, Funny day, that body I had coming up is going to be new. So Thessalonians is a great book for a Christian, along with the Gospel of John, to start off reading. Don't do what I do and start reading Revelation first, please. Don't do that. That gets you all messed up. But these are two good books for, Thess uh, for, for Thessalonians, for Christians to begin reading. Show them. Show them where, show them where to find the Gospel of John, and then show them where Thessalonians is. 
Let them read. Then after that, what do you tell them to do? Start in Genesis. And I saw a woman today. She, she just got saved recently, I assume. She's reading the Bible. She says, I don't understand it. Guys, just keep reading. Just keep going. Just go through Revelation. And when you're done, start it again. When you're done, start it again. And you'll see every time you open up the Bible and every year you, you, you read the Bible, it'd be like that little guy in the refrigerator. How the heck did that get in there? How's he turn up? Wow, I never saw that before. And you mark and read your Bible and put notes, and you grow. God is great. His words are lie because, you know, street ministry has been all my ministry as far as a Christian. And there's nothing more when you got the black book in your hands that people hate you. And the Bible says it. And the people hate the Thessalonians, but Paul loves them. And chapter 1, take a great remark and look at your Christian life. And do you have these, these 10 verses in your life? 